Hey, Amy, how are things in the library? Are you finding it a lot easier to study there? Oh, hey, babe. Thanks for checking in on me. Yeah, this place is like the best for me to concentrate. I feel like I can really focus on the material here. What's going on right now? Is there a reason that you're interrupting me? Aren't you the one that keeps telling me that I need to pass that exam and that it's really important? Well, yes, don't get me wrong. I'm still supporting you. I want you to do that more than anything else in the world. In fact, it's for that reason exactly that I'm messaging you right now. I'm not really following. What are you talking about? Well, I can't be sure if you're in the library or not, but I'm quite sure that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. By messaging you right now, I'm distracting you, but at least I'm distracting you from the right thing. Hold on. What is it with you? Do you want me to pass this exam or not? Some days it's up and some days it's down with you, huh? You're really a confusing guy, Tom. I guess I should give a bit more context as to why I'm messaging you then. I found it very interesting this morning. Interesting? What are you talking about? I woke up like I always do and I started cleaning the house. This is my routine before I get to work. I've been doing this for you so that you don't have to waste time cleaning. You passing that exam is way more important. I found it very interesting that your Nintendo Switch wasn't in the place that it usually is. In fact, after cleaning up the whole house, I couldn't find it at all. It's very strange. What do you think? Should I call the police about this? Maybe it's been stolen. Oh, hardy har har. That's what you're making a big fuss about? Okay, fine, so I took my Nintendo Switch with me. Is it such a big deal? Are you really going to get on me for something like that? I mean, last time I checked, you were my husband, not my dad. Hey, I'm even more important than both of those. I'm the guy that's your biggest supporter. Care to give me a reason why you snuck your Switch out of the house? Let me mention that I also saw that you were using it last night too. Do you even care about becoming a lawyer? You're just way too perceptive for your own good. You've always been this way. It's such a pain in the butt. Okay, fine. So what do you want me to say? You want me to admit that I've been playing on my Nintendo Switch? Well, okay, fine. I admit it. I've been playing it last night and I've been playing it today. It is what it is. What are you going to do about it? Amy, you know this isn't acceptable, right? You have a dream that you need to make a reality. You have a goal to fulfill. I thought we already organized a system with this Nintendo Switch. There are certain days that you play it and there are certain days that you don't. So, what's happened? Did you lose your passion? Have you decided that you don't want to be a lawyer or something? Come on, don't talk to me that way. Of course I still want to be a lawyer. I don't have any choice but to become a lawyer. But are you really going to get angry at me for this? It's just a little bit of a break. I mean, surely you can allow me something like that. Life isn't all about reading books all the time. You know, I'm a human being at the end of the day, not some robot. I get it, I really do. I understand that you need a break. And because of that, we've created time for when you get to have a break. Not only that, but I give you an emotional release as well, right? You always get to talk to me about whatever is on your mind. I'm being a really good boyfriend, you know? If you ask me, the amount of usage you spend on that thing is way too much. You have to cut back on it. Are you kidding me right now? You know, I thought when I graduated from high school that the studying would end. I thought I would actually be free and could enjoy myself. I feel like it's only gotten worse. When does this dull tedium end? There's going to be time for you to relax. I promise you that you will find solace at some point. Until then, we have to do this thing one step at a time. I mean, I'm sacrificing a lot here to help you fulfill your dream, right? I'm the one that's earning the income for this household. You don't even need to work. I'd appreciate it if you used that time wisely. Ugh, it's such a drag having to deal with you these days. What happened to that sweet guy in high school? What happened to that guy that could kick it back and have fun? I mean, do you remember all the little funny antics that we got up to there? Do you remember that love note we kept throwing around the class? Those were some good times. They sure were. That wasn't the foundation of our relationship. 
But guess what? People grow older and people change. We're adults now. We're not kids anymore. Our actions should reflect that. Snore! So adults can't have fun? Jeez. I really miss the old you. You're so serious all the time. I mean, just because we're older doesn't mean that we can't enjoy ourselves. Like, seriously. Is it really that bad if I'm sitting on the Nintendo Switch every now and then? Honestly, if you were in my position, you would know how much of a release it is. I mean, studying for the bar exam isn't easy. It's as dry as it can be. My mind needs to be a little bit refreshed if I'm going to actually pass that thing, you know? Like, don't think about it as me slacking off. It's just me taking a tactical break. Maybe you have a point. I don't know what it's like to study for that exam. I'm not really sure how hard it is. What I do know is about striving for your dreams. I mean, take a look at me. Do you think I got to the position I'm in by just slacking off? I had to go through some grueling nights just to be here. Yeah, but come on, Tom. Let's just admit it. You get to do cool stuff all the time. I mean, you get to hang out with good-looking people, make them beautiful, and you even design your own clothes. Like, that stuff is exciting. That stuff is creative. It's totally different from what I have to do. I'm not gonna lie, it has its perks. But at the same time, it's not all sunshine and roses. I've had to have my fair share of pain to get to the position I'm in. Do you remember all those sleepless nights I had? Do you remember those times when I was fearing for my business and having it shut down? I'm telling you right now, those weren't fun. Even the times where I was able to put on a brave face, you should have known that I was suffering on the inside. Yeah? Well, good thing you have the cute, bubbly girlfriend like me to cheer you up. If only I had the same. The only thing I have is this boyfriend that keeps pushing me to study, study, study. You know, we're still young. There's a lot more that I want to do with my life than just read a book. I feel you. I really do. I know where you're coming from, Amy. At the same time, remember why you're doing this. You wanted to break the cycle of poverty, right? You want to break free from your family's long lineage of being in a low-income household. I mean, that's exactly what you told me when you were in high school, and I really admired it. I wanted to be a support for you. I know you're angry at me and you think that I'm not a good partner because I'm not allowing you to have fun. But you can also consider me as a really great partner because I'm actually pushing you. A truly bad partner is going to let you do what you want, even if it leads to your own self-destruction. I want more for you. Look, I want to argue back with you, but you kind of have a point. You really are one of my greatest supporters. I guess any other guy would date me and say that everything I do is perfect and just admire me. At least you have some sort of expectation of what I should be and who I should become. I mean, heck, I wouldn't even be studying if it wasn't for you. I'd probably look at that first chapter and just fall asleep, giving up before the race even started. I'm glad you're starting to see sense. You and I both come from the same type of household. We want to do more than just live on this earth. We want to actually succeed. I think you choosing law is the best way to do that. I'm really glad that you made that decision. Yeah, well, even though it's as dry as it is, and it probably doesn't suit my personality, I can see myself helping a lot of good families out there. Maybe help the families that were similar to my one. That would really lighten up my soul. It's a really beautiful dream. I can't wait for you to start building and saving families that were as broken as yours. Hey, enough of that. We've already had this discussion. I mean, my family is what it was, but it certainly wasn't broken. Oh, come on, Amy. Who are you kidding? I know you want to defend that dad of yours, but honestly, you have to accept that you were growing up in a really broken household. Well, I wouldn't say it was broken exactly. It was just different from a lot of people. Your dad was barely there. That's not a healthy family. I mean, you used to tell me that your dad would come home a couple of times a year. All the other times, he would be out making a fool of himself with his friends or staying at some girl's house. It amazes me that you still have respect for a guy that is that neglectful. Look, I know that he turned into the guy that he is, but I still remember those times when I was a little girl. Gosh, I can just picture it now. 
He would lift me up and throw me into the air, catch me again before I fell to the ground. He would do it at pretty much the last second, making me fear for my safety, but reassuring that he's always there for me. I have some really beautiful memories of him, and I can't help but just respect him for it. You're telling me that a couple of memories you have as a kid make up for all the horrible treatment that you experienced as a teenager? Horrible is a little bit of an exaggeration, don't you think? I mean, sure, there were times that he wasn't at home, but it's not like he abused me or anything. He still had that sweet, tender heart towards me. It was just issues he had with my mom. In all honesty, you could probably argue that my mom was at fault back then. Are you kidding me right now? I don't care what perspective you look at it, it's quite clear that your dad was the one that was in the wrong for what happened there. I mean, let's face it, when I knew your mom, I had a lot of respect for her. I saw her as a super mom. I mean, she would clean, she would work, and she would raise the kids all at the same time. Not only that, but her mentality was astounding. You never saw her break. You never saw her falter. I was really mesmerized by that type of thing. Your mom was like a role model for me. Are you kidding me? You actually liked that old hag? You should have heard how controlling she was when you weren't around. I mean, she used to get angry at me for everything. I didn't have any fun in that household. My dad, on the other hand, was a different story. There were a few moments that he was actually at home. I could actually enjoy myself when he was there. You know what I mean, right? He would create an environment for us to have fun. I could still have those special father and daughter moments. I guess the only issue was I didn't have much of it. It's amazing that a man can abstain from his duty that much and still be respected by his children. You're a real puzzle, you know that, Amy? I mean, here am I, doing my best to support you, providing the income for this household, and even pushing you to be your best. Despite that, there are a lot of times where you avoid me. Sometimes you even reject my advances. Yeah? Well, can you blame me? I feel like I'm dating a tyrant. It's not exactly easy to just submit myself to you and you always tell me what to do. You know, you should learn from my dad. Be somewhat caring, be soft, and have fun. Like, just relax a little bit. I'm studying for this exam. I'm going to pass it. Don't worry. Look, Amy, you tell me not to worry, but let's face it. What would you be doing if I wasn't on your back all the time? I mean, even when I am on your back, you're still doing the wrong thing every now and then. Oh, what? You're going to make such a big deal about me taking my Nintendo Switch? Come on. You act as if the world is going to end if I play some games for a couple of hours. It's not just that, though. You and I both know that you could be doing a lot more to focus on your studies. Let's face it, there are times when you start to stumble and fall. I know that you secretly go out with your friends and start drinking. You let yourself go too much. Hey, come on. You know I would never do something like that. I play games every now and then, but you know I take this thing seriously, right? I find that hard to believe when I hear you stumbling into the home late at night, laughing to yourself. The next day you're sleeping for the whole day, sometimes on the floor. I have to pick you up and put you in a proper bed. Oh my god. What a klutz. <laughs> Just think about it. Every small decision you make like that is going to affect the outcome of how you do on that test. I'm keeping you in line so that our future is secure. I'm making sure that you can escape that low-income household. All right, fine. I hate to admit it, but you're right. You really are the one that's been helping me the best. It's kind of like tough love, isn't it? Exactly. But you know what? The moment we've reached the place where we want to be, all of this is going to end. We can go back to being that happy, loving couple that we always used to be. I know you really miss those times. And to be honest, I do too. We just have to put in the work first. Alright, if you say so. I'll start to get my head into the game a little bit more. You have a good point. I haven't been feeling very determined, but I really need to do something to break the cycle. I mean, I love my dad. I love the life I've had so far, but I want to create something different for the family I have from this point on. I want to actually give them a proper education. 
I want them to be able to run up to me and tell me their dreams. I want them to ask me to help make it a reality and actually be able to. That's right, and don't you worry. I know it's going to be tough, but I'm always going to be there. If you ever need a massage or something to treat yourself with, I'll provide it for you. I really want the best for you, Amy. Thanks, honey. I'm sorry I've been this way lately. I'll start appreciating what you do from this point on. Oh, crap. You have got to be kidding me right now. Are, are you serious? This was the last thing that I wanted to read. What are you talking about? I just got a text from your dad. He wants me to come over and give him a chicken burrito. I swear, I don't know when this stuff is going to end. I mean, am I going to be doing this for the rest of his life? It's not like he can't do this type of thing himself. Hey, come on, don't look down on him that much. He's just doing this from a place of love. He wants to get along with you. This is his version of bonding. Are you serious? Well, his version of bonding seems to be ordering me around for the past 10 years. Think about it, Amy. He's been doing this ever since I've known him. Do you remember that time when I first came over to your house? Do you remember what he made me do? Oh, come on. Are you seriously still complaining about that? Of course I remember it. You like to bring it up every month just to remind me how much you hate him. Well, I don't hate him, but he needs to know boundaries. I mean, that first day that I met him, he actually made me clean his car. Talk about a first impression. I should have realized the type of relationship I would have with that man just from that alone. I mean, things haven't changed ever since. Come on. That's just the type of guy my dad is. Don't take it to heart. I'm pretty sure he had to do the same thing when he was your age. It's probably a generational thing. Don't try and justify this, Amy. It is not normal. I'm telling you now, this was the last thing that I wanted to do. I'm so busy. It's not easy running your own store and designing your own clothes. These things take time, and I was in my creative mood. Now I have to dampen that mood with another interaction with your dad. All right, come on. Stop being such a wet blanket. Learn to enjoy yourself a bit. Anyway, I don't want you to be giving my dad that sour attitude. Perk yourself up. If you want to tell me what I should do about my bar exam, I'm going to tell you what you should do when associating with my dad. All right, fine. I get it. He just sent me another text. He's getting really impatient. I don't see what the rush is. It's just a stupid burrito. Does he just expect me to buy it and teleport it there? I hope he doesn't take up too much of my time. Hey, what did I just say? Start getting yourself into a good mood right now. You promised me that you're going to talk to him politely. Okay, all right, fine. I get it. Promise me! Okay, jeez, get off my case. I promise you. I promise you that I'm going to talk to your dad and we're going to have a civilized conversation with each other. Boy! Boy! Boy, you really think that you're funny, don't you? I bet you think that this is hilarious. I have to tell you that I'm an older guy and I've met some disrespectful people in my lifetime. You have to be the top of the list. What do you want, Richard? You know how much of a busy guy I am, right? I don't have time to listen to your little tantrums. At some point, you'll have to grow up and learn how to wipe your own bottom. Do you really think I'm going to be your little maid on demand, rushing to you at your every whim? You've always had a big mouth on you, haven't you, Tom? You really have a lot of nerve talking to me that way when I'm the one letting you date my daughter. What do you mean that you're the one letting me date her? Stop being ridiculous. Are you actually trying to say that you're controlling her and giving her permission to do what she does? She is a grown woman now. She makes her own decisions regardless of what you think about it. Yeah, well, regardless, you still owe me a little bit of gratitude, boy. I mean, at the end of the day, you like my daughter, don't you? Well, like is a little bit of an understatement. A good portion of my life has been spent with her. We work together. I've sacrificed for her. We're a little bit past the stage of like. Okay, well, that's good to know. So, you do like my daughter. If that's the case, you have to thank me for that. 
I'm the one that produced her at the end of the day, wasn't I? She came from me. Whatever you like about her is thanks to me. I don't care if it's her looks. I don't care if it's her personality. I don't care if it's her work ethic. It's all because of me. So if you have anything you like about her, you have to show some gratitude towards me and not the type of disrespect that you have shown me today. Well, look, as much as I love Amy and I think there are a lot of good things about her, it doesn't excuse your behavior. I don't care if she's a 10 out of 10, the most amazing woman on the planet. It doesn't make up for the way that you treat me. Besides, she should be the one that takes credit for whatever is good about her, not you. Who are you to talk about treatment? You're acting like such a victim here. Don't you realize it's the other way around? I mean, take a look at what you've done today. I've never seen someone do something that disgusting before. I wouldn't even wish that upon my worst enemy. You're on another level of depravity, Tom. What are you talking about right now? I got your damn burrito, didn't I? How about you just put that greasy, disgusting thing in your mouth and just shut up? What did you say? I swear if I still had my legs, you wouldn't even have the nerve to shoot off a comment like that at me. How dare you talk to me that way? Besides, you and I both know why I'm not going to be eating this burrito. This is an absolutely pathetic excuse for a burrito. What are you talking about? I got you the same thing that you always get at the burrito store. What do you honestly have to complain about right now? Do you want me to wrap it up in a Christmas box for you or something? Do you want me to treat it as if I was handing you over the queen's crown or something? Get over yourself already. Obviously, I'm not asking for that type of treatment, but you could show me a little bit more respect than what you've given me today. I mean, look at this thing. Is this honestly something that you would give to someone? Is this honestly how you treat people? Richard, I have got no idea what you're talking about right now. Oh, come on, don't give me that nonsense. You handed this burrito over to me in the poorest of conditions. I mean, take a look at the weather out there. It is absolutely pouring rain. What person in their right mind would actually put a beautiful, salivating, exquisite item like this into someone's mailbox in this type of weather? I mean, are you just out of your mind? Just what exactly was going through your head when you did that? It's the exact same thing that is going through my head this whole morning. I've been thinking about all the things that I have to do at work. I've been thinking about how much I'm behind because of my insane father-in-law getting me to do these stupid errands for him all the time. What do you mean, stupid errands? You think you can just date my daughter and get away with it scot-free? Don't you realize that the most pleasurable thing in life comes at a price? I'm sorry, but you have to pay your dues. You have to do your part if you really want to date my daughter, and let me tell you something, I'm her father. Attending to my needs is part of your job. Actually, uh, no it's not. The only person who should be attending to your needs is yourself. I mean, just take a look at the situation, Richard. I've been doing this stuff for you for years now, and it never ends with you. You honestly just need a babysitter. I'm sorry, but I'm not in a position to be that type of person. I've got bigger and better things than I need to occupy my time with. Looking after my father-in-law is not one of them. I can't believe you're making such a big deal out of this. I wasn't even asking you to do much for me. I had a very simple request. I mean, a six-year-old could have done what you did and done a better job at it, too. All you had to do was go to the shop and get me the burrito that I wanted. Then you had to just hand it over to me at the door. That's it. That is all you had to do. You and I both know that's not all I had to do. I have been down this road before. I know what happens when I go to that door and actually talk to you. It just ends up being another argument, another thing that we fight about, and another thing that my girlfriend Amy has to worry about. Not only that, but you end up getting me to do some other ridiculous request that you come up with at that point in time. Putting it in your mailbox was the best thing. You get your item, and I get to go back to work. There is no drama. Yeah, right. You like to paint the picture like there is no drama, but you and I both know that you were trying to instigate something. I mean, seriously, you don't think you could have dropped me a message or something? Maybe even knocked on the door? 
The only reason that I found that thing was because I was worried that my bills came in today. I didn't want them to get wet. I didn't expect to see some soggy, mushy burrito absolutely destroyed because of your carelessness. Also, can I add that I'm not even looking at the correct burrito here? What do you mean you're not looking at the correct burrito? I got the same thing that you always get. It's always the beef burrito with you, right? I mean, you get that with the yogurt sauce. I've done exactly what you've asked. No, you haven't. Are you seriously that bad at following instructions? I mean, you're this worried about your precious little clothing business, but you can't even do something as basic as this? I'm sorry, but you should just give up that thing. There's no hope for you. What are you talking about right now? I'm talking about what I asked you to get. I told you to get a chicken burrito, not a beef burrito, not a lamb burrito, and not some stupid duck burrito. I wanted a chicken one. Check the messages. That's explicitly what I said. Alright, fine. Maybe you did want a chicken burrito. Like I told you, I felt a little absent-minded. I was thinking about way too much to do this type of stuff for you. I mean, of course, I'm going into automatic mode and just getting you the thing that you always get. Do you really think that's a good enough excuse? It just shows that you don't care about our relationship at all. Don't you dare play that card with me, Richard. Don't think that just because I made one little mistake that you get to hold it over me forever. I mean, think about all the things that I've done for you over the years. Think about the number of times that I've gotten you your burrito. I didn't have to do any of that, you know? I mean, sure, you're my father-in-law and everything, but I could just ignore you. Okay, fine. I'll admit it, you have done a lot for me. Pretty much most of the things that I asked you to do, you're able to do. I'm not gonna deny that. At the same time, look at the attitude that you've given me. You give me this whiny, reluctant, and begrudging attitude all the time. You act like I'm disgusting. That's why you slip up, Tom. That's where it is so clear that you have no respect for your elders. Okay, well, what can I say? After doing this year after year, you start to get sick of it. You start to wonder if you should just get paid to be the babysitter. I mean, honestly, why are we talking about this right now? We're talking about you not getting the burrito you wanted. I mean, are you seriously going to make a big deal about this? Is this honestly the most troubling thing that's on your mind lately? If you were that worried about getting the correct burrito, how about you just go down and get it yourself? What, are you nuts? Did I not just say that it's pouring rain out there? Do you really want a guy like me, who has sustained a severe injury in a car accident, to go down there and get his own burrito? I don't see why not. It's only down the road. Boy, do I need to remind you again, I'm a handicapped person. I do not have the physical capability to go and get that thing myself. As such, being in the circumstance that I'm in, I was hoping that I could actually rely on my family to do something like this for me. It is clear that I can't. It's clear that my closest family only has disdain for me. Oh, Richard, just get over yourself. You and I both know that your injury isn't that severe. I mean, sure, when you had the accident, you were incapacitated for quite some time. But by some miracle, you were able to start moving your body again. Your legs started working. You were able to walk around fine. I mean, I've even seen you run at some points. What do you mean you've seen me run? I haven't done anything like that. Who are you kidding? You and I have been in public together. You may be old, but you're like a puppy that can't control himself. I mean, the moment you see a hot dog stand, you just run up to it like it's a million dollars that's up for grabs. I know you can't control it. It's just all impulsive. You see something you want and then you just lose your mind. All sense of rationality just goes out the window. I have no idea what you're talking about right now. I mean, you're extrapolating all of this from the fact that I wanted to eat a hot dog. Don't you think you're stretching this a little bit too far? Yeah, right. I'm just scratching the surface with you. I mean, let's take a look at that little accident that you had. On a fine, hot, sunny day, walking around with, uh, what do you know, a slimy hot dog in your hand, dripping the sauce all over your shirt. Dang, that does start to make me hungry. Oh, just remembering that day is making me salivate. 
Hey, do you reckon you can come back here and give me a hot dog instead? It'll make up for the fact that you've absolutely destroyed this beautiful piece from heaven. The answer is no. I'm not going to help you. I'm busy. But here you are just further proving my point. Your mind is scattered. Anytime you feel like you want something, you're just going to chase after it. You can't think about anything else. Oh, stop talking like that. Stop talking like I'm just this guy with no self-control. Well, look, I'm sorry, but you're not doing yourself any favors. Just remember what happened on that day you got into that accident. Picture it clearly in your head. Recall what happened. I don't really know what you want me to say. I was out on a stroll. I had my hot dog and I was, uh, I was enjoying myself. Then I saw a very beautiful woman. Next thing you know, I'm getting hit by a car. Well, that's a very simple way of putting it, isn't it? I'll tell you what happened. You saw a lady minding her own business just walking her dog, trying to enjoy her day. You saw her for a split second and all sense of rationality just goes out the window. You start crossing a busy road without even looking both ways just to go talk to her. I mean, are you insane? How is it that you've come this far? Honestly, when I saw you in the hospital and I heard the story, I thought it was lucky that you didn't actually die. Now I even think it's luckier that you were able to recover from your injury. I just honestly can't believe someone could do something that stupid. Yeah, right. Who are you to talk about stupid? You weren't there. You don't know what situation I was in. You didn't even see this woman. I mean, holy cow. Those were some bazookas on her. It should have been illegal to have a weapon like that out in the open. Trust me, I'm probably not the only guy that accidentally got hit by a car that day. Just listen to yourself talk right now, Richard. I mean, let's face it, you're an old man already. Why are you acting like you're a teenager that can't control himself? Like, so what if there's a beautiful woman walking along the street? You're really just going to sacrifice your life like that? I don't care how beautiful she might have been, a person with a half a brain wouldn't even do that. Yeah, well, it's not as easy when you have the history that I do. What are you talking about? What history? Oh, come on, really? Are you seriously going to do me like that? You really want me to talk about the glory days again, don't you? Oh, wait, uh, hold on. No, 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 no. Let's not go there. I've had enough. I've heard way too much. Oh, come on. You know how much of a good storyteller I am, right? I just know that you wanted me to talk about this. No, honestly, I don't. I've had enough of your little fantasies and fabricated memories. What are you talking about? Fabricated memories? I don't have any fabric on my memories. No, look, that's not what I'm talking about. I don't care what you think happened so many years ago, Richard. I know how people work and your stories are full of crap. They don't make any sense. I don't know how you could say that to me. I mean, check out this handsome devil. Here I am in my old age, but I'm still picking up the young babes. I don't know what part of you thinks that you're handsome, and I don't know what part of you thinks you're picking up all the young babes. I mean, sure, I'll admit that sometimes a girl shows you a little bit of interest, but let's be honest. All that you're doing is using the insurance money that you got from that accident. It's not like there's anything genuine on the inside that they like about you. You're still just a sleazy old man. They're just putting up with your poor attitude for a little bit of cash. Well, if that's not a clear sign of jealousy, I don't know what is. I'm sorry, what did you just say? What do you mean, jealousy? You know damn well what I mean by jealousy. I mean, take a look at the situation. Here's an old buck taking all the young, pretty flowers away from you. I know that mustn't feel good. Richard, what are you talking about right now? Why would I care about that sort of thing? Don't you realize I have a girlfriend? Not only that, but don't you realize that that girlfriend happens to be your daughter? Would you really approve of me having that type of attitude? Just chasing after every pretty girl that I see? I don't see why you wouldn't. I mean, that's something that I did. Okay, you've clearly shown me that you don't care about your daughter in the least. You're actually trying to encourage me to cheat on her. Just what type of father are you anyway? 
Hey, look, all I'm saying is that every guy has that urge. Some guys can satisfy it, some can't. I know that some little wimp in the position that you're in can't do anything like that. Are you serious? Don't you realize the type of customers I get coming in every day? Yeah, I do. I know everything about that silly little job that you spend so much time on. You really love talking that place up, don't you? I mean, wow. Look at me. My name's Tom. I cut hair for a living. I have to spend three hours looking at myself in the mirror just to look good and feel good about myself. I'm telling you right now, some guy with that type of girly attitude isn't going to be popular with anyone. I think you need to get yourself a reality check. Richard, do you honestly think that I have an issue in that area? It's like you said, I cut hair for a living. I have girls come into my store all the time. So if I really wanted to engage in the behavior that you're trying to promote right now, I have every way of doing so. The only reason that I haven't been doing it is because the type of lifestyle that you're talking about right now just seems so ludicrous to me. It's not as important as your daughter becoming a lawyer and us becoming successful together. Yeah, right. I don't care how many girls that you have coming into that store. They can smell a wimp a mile away. I mean, why do you spend so much time styling up your hair like that? What are you talking about? I cut hair for a living. I need to have the image that I can actually do it. Do you expect me to go in there bold like you? Yeah, why not? Why not actually have a good haircut like I do? I mean, look at how good I look. I don't actually need hair to make myself look good. I don't need to spend months trying to grow it out and styling it like you do. And I still have attention from all the chicks. Oh, come on, Richard. Enough with the BS. You and I both know why you're bold. I've known you for a long time. I know that you had hair. I know that you were very proud of that thing too. You try to hide it from everyone else, but I saw all the products in your house. The moment your hair started to recede, you did whatever you could to keep it. Those products you had in there looked very expensive. You were desperate to try and keep your hair, but no amount of product was able to save you, huh? Now look at you. You're actually trying to put down people who have hair. Before you were saying that I was jealous because of the amount of attention that you get from girls. But let's face it, it's actually the other way around. You're quite jealous of the position that I'm in, aren't you? Yeah, right. I'm actually thankful for the fact that my hair has started to fall out. All that stuff was just hiding the good qualities about me. Now everyone can see the masculine, chiseled face that I have. What are you talking about? Your face looks like the lines that they have on a map showing how steep a mountain is. Honestly, what do you see when you look in the mirror? Richard, I'm not trying to make fun of you or anything, but if you just wake up and face reality, you're not as good looking as you think you are. Yeah, whatever. You're just mad because I still get attention in my old age. You know what? Start showing me a little bit more respect and attention, and I might show you a thing or two. I'll teach you my tricks and charm. The more I talk to you, the more I just don't understand things. I mean, can you believe that your daughter still actually has respect for you? Honestly, I can't see why she wouldn't. I'm a pretty awesome dude, aren't I? Anyone with half a brain cell would realize that I'm someone worth respect and love. Okay, but what part of you does she respect exactly? I mean, you're a sleazebag that still hits on young women. Not only that, but you're actually trying to encourage her boyfriend to cheat on her? Despite that, she seems to respect you a lot more than me. I don't see why it's so confusing for you. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Maybe you should work on yourself and develop a little bit more masculine charm. Get yourself out of that hairdresser's job and get a real job. Start showing her how much of a man you are and then she'll start respecting you. Okay, so you're telling me that I should give up my dream and what I'm passionate about just so that she starts respecting me? That is just ridiculous. Honestly, I can't believe it. I mean, you haven't supported her in one thing in her whole life. She's had this dream of becoming a lawyer, and you've been so indifferent of it. I've been the only one that's actually been pushing her to chase after that dream. 
You barely gave her any attention over the years, and she still loves you. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, well, just take a look at the facts at the end of the day. I'm her father. I'm the one that forged that special bond with her when she was younger. It only makes sense that she respects me. Okay, so she respects the guy that walked out of her life when she was a teenager to go sleep with other women? But she doesn't respect the other person that was raising her the whole time. The person that helped her with all of her schooling and actually put food on the table for her. Oh, come on. Don't start praising that woman. The only good thing that hag ever did was give me a beautiful daughter. So, not only is it your daughter, but you actually badmouth that woman too? Honestly, sometimes I just feel like I'm living in a different universe. I mean, you guys actually make me feel like I'm the weird one here. Well, it's about time you started catching on. You are the weird one here. I don't know. I'm honestly getting tired talking about this. You got your burrito, so be happy with it. I don't want to waste any more time here. Apparently, my store is really busy at the moment. We have a lot of customers coming in. A lot of them are specifically asking for me. I really need to think about teaching my workers to develop some sort of social skills. They're all fantastic at what they do, but the talking comes into play as well. Wait, hang on a second. You're not actually going now, are you? What am I going to do about this stupid burrito? I need you to get me another one. I'm hungry. Figure it out yourself, Richard. I've got things to do. Go microwave it or something. You impudent little brat. Don't you dare run away. Get back here. I demand another burrito. You hear me? Hey, Amy. How's that study group of yours going? Is it working out for you? Oh, hey, Tom. Thanks for checking in on me. This study group is great. I've really got myself surrounded by a good bunch of people. I don't know what I would do without these guys. Wow, it sounds like it's going really well for you. So you're pretty focused on your studies right now. Correct. Of course I am. It was just so hard doing it on my own. I guess with things like this, it's really better to do it in a group. Now that I have people who are working towards the same sort of thing that I'm working towards, we can talk about what we've learned. We can exchange ideas, even give our opinions. It kind of sucks studying this stuff on your own. I mean, it's all just input. You try to stuff it in your brain and keep it in there, and it's not a good study method at all. I can't disagree with that. I think it's great that you have some people to actually talk to. I mean, it's a lot better to learn something and then try to teach it to someone else. You're actually using your brain when you do that. I think that's amazing. And you know what? You've even been staying out late tonight. I'm really proud of you. Yeah, well, what can I say? I've got a dream that I'm working towards, right? This is the least that you can expect. Well, it's definitely a big improvement from what I saw a couple of weeks ago. I mean, you haven't touched the Nintendo Switch at all. It's clear that you're not playing any games. You've also cut back on going out to hang out with this new study group of yours. These are really good things. Amy, if you keep going at this pace, you're going to pass that bar exam for sure. Well, I'm really glad to get the vote of confidence from my boyfriend. Thanks for always being there for me, honey. As always, your dream is number one to me. I might give you a reward for working so hard recently. Well, actually, now that you say it, there is something that I want you to do. Alright, well, let's keep it within reason. Okay, well, you and I can both agree that I'm doing really well lately, right? I mean, I'm putting a lot of effort into my study. That's undeniable. You have been doing your best to study for the bar. Exactly. I don't know if you've noticed it, but I'm not just putting 100%. I'm putting 110% into this. Honestly, I'm doing my best here. I know that me fulfilling my dream is going to make you happy. And I want you to do something that makes me happy. Okay, well, there's not a lot of things that I won't do to make you happy. Amy, what is it that you need? Do you want some dinner cooked at night? Uh, or do you want a massage or something? Anything that's going to help you achieve our dream. I'm willing to do it. Okay, well, I'm glad you're so open to that idea because there is something I need you to do. 
I need you to go shopping with my father. Okay, look, I'm gonna take back what I said. Maybe there's a lot of things that I won't do to make you happy. Are you kidding me right now? You do realize that your dad and I hate each other's guts, right? You actually want us to go shopping together? That is gonna end in a disaster. Okay, well, why would it? Why couldn't it be an opportunity for you guys to get over your differences and actually start enjoying each other's company? I should have known you'd have this pessimistic attitude towards it. Well, look, Amy, you can call it pessimistic or you can just call it straight up realistic. You know your dad and I have known each other for a long time. I don't think any amount of bonding is going to help us get to know each other better. In fact, I'm a little bit scared of what else I could know about him. He might actually find a new way for me to hate him. Stop looking at it that way. I just want you to think about this for a second. It's actually a really good idea. Recollect all the memories that you've had with my dad. Reflect on all the things that you've done with each other. What's some things that come to mind? Well, the car wash that I mentioned the other day is one. Also, that little drama about his stupid little burrito is another. Apart from that, there's countless times I can recall him just ordering me around to do things. Me being his slave, basically. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm getting at. You see, you guys haven't even had quality time with each other. You haven't even had the opportunity. Like, think about it. If you were in the right environment to get along with each other, don't you think that'd be a good thing? Well, maybe yes and no. I mean, if you put us in a situation where we're meant to have fun when we clearly can't have it with each other, it might end up pretty bad, to be honest. Look, all I'm asking you to do is to give it one go. I mean, you care about me, right? You appreciate how hard I'm studying lately, don't you? Of course I do. It's amazing what you're doing. Exactly. So if I'm out here doing something good that makes you happy, you need to be doing the same thing for me. Do you understand that? All right, Amy, look, I see where you're coming from. I get it, fine, shopping it is. But I'm a little bit skeptical of how well the shopping adventure is going to go with me and him. Don't you think we could do something else together? No, look, it has to be shopping. He's actually asked for this himself. He asked specifically for you to go shopping with him. What? Well, that's interesting. I wouldn't expect something like that to come from him. Well, fine. If he's that eager to get along with me, then so be it. But I hope he's prepared to actually talk to me like a human being. I'm not just going to be his slave that just walks around carrying whatever he wants to buy. Okay, so how did my amazing, most perfect boyfriend in the whole wide world do today? You and my dad had an amazing time together, right? Actually, you know what? Why am I even asking? I already know the answer to that. Things went off without a hitch, didn't they? I mean, here's something that you guys don't realize. You two might hate each other, but I can see the good in both of you. I can see that you guys can actually get along if given the chance. Just ignore what I was asking before. I don't need to hear something that I already know. Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're actually under the impression that things went really well today, aren't you? Well, of course I am. Look, you can say whatever you want about me. You can say that I'm not the best when it comes to studying. You can say I can be a little bit dumb at times. But there's something I know, and that's people. I know when two people are going to get along. I mean, do you know how many people I've been able to hook up while I was in university? I've been everyone's secret little matchmaker. Except this time, I'm just creating situations where my dad and boyfriend can actually get along with each other. Actually, you know what? I'm actually so curious right now. I just have to know, so give me some highlights. Tell me about the times you guys laughed with each other. Tell me what you found out about my dad that you actually really liked. Amy, today was an absolute disaster. I'm not sure how you were thinking it was going to go, but it hasn't gone well at all. What? Are you serious right now? That's honestly the attitude you're going to take, aren't you? Wow, I can't believe it. So even after you guys actually had a decent day together, you're going to make it out like it was the worst thing in the world? That's so petty. Well, you know what? 
Regardless of how you want to make it out to me, I know that there were some really good highlights today. No, look, you're not listening to me. When I say that today was an absolute disaster, I mean it. There wasn't one good thing about today. What are you talking about? Are you actually being serious? I am being dead serious. Don't look at it that way. I know he must have really appreciated everything that you did today. I bet you guys had so many conversations with each other. I don't know what you guys like to talk about, but I'm sure it was very stimulating for the both of you. Are you kidding me? The only time he would talk to me is if he was ordering me around. It was always, get this, get that, give me your credit card, get out of my face, move out of the way so that I can talk to this girl. Actually, he spent a lot of time talking to other people rather than me. You know, your dad is still doing that thing even in his old age. Does he actually think he still has a chance with these young girls? Oh, he is such a sleazebag. It's kind of disgusting. Well, yeah. Well, look, it's kind of an old habit that my dad can't really get rid of. I mean, it's the reason that him and my mom weren't getting along in the first place. I swear if she just did her job around the house, if she just did what she could to be pretty and attractive for him, he wouldn't have to go to other women. Now look at him. He actually has an addiction. He can't stop himself from doing that. Okay, so your dad was the one that cheated on your mom, and you're still going to defend him? Where is the logic in any of that? He's clearly at fault for what he's done. Make him take responsibility. Well, look, it's not something that you need to understand. It's just something that you have to accept. Okay, but I think I need to tell you something about your dad. The last time him and I spoke, he was actually insinuating that I should probably cheat on you. Is that the type of dad that you can be proud of? What did you just say? Yeah, I mean, he even did it today. He kept bragging to me about how many girls he's talked to. He kept bragging even though the girls were clearly uncomfortable. He thought he was doing an amazing job at wooing them. After that, he would point to a particular girl and tell me to talk to her. When I didn't do that, he would call me a sissy. He said that it was clear that I didn't have any balls if I didn't go talk to a girl. I mean, aren't you disappointed in the fact that this is your dad? He's actually encouraging your boyfriend to do something like this. Can you honestly sit there, look me straight in the eyes, and say your dad has your best interest in heart? Yeah, I gotta be honest. It would be kind of funny if you actually got someone's number. What? I mean, a guy like you getting another girl's number? It's hilarious. That just would never happen. Oh, wait a second. You're not actually saying this as well, are you? Amy, you and I are meant to be in a committed relationship. I mean, you do realize I'm in it for the long run, right? You aren't meant to give me the okay for behavior like that. I know, I know. I know it's bad and everything, but think about it. It's kind of more interesting if you told me that you did do it and got someone's number than if you said you didn't do it and you didn't get anyone's number. I mean, it's clear that you didn't make use of your day enough. I'm sorry, I don't know who I'm listening to right now. Is this my partner? Is this someone that actually takes my relationship seriously? Of course I am! But you know, I'm just saying that you can have a little bit of fun too. It's just a bit of talking. It's not like you're getting all smoochy with her. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore everything that I heard just now. Thinking about this is making my stomach churn. You're such a baby. It's kind of cute. You know what? At the end of the day, it's really good that you guys get along. I mean, just admit it. You had fun, right? Sorry, but do you even realize what is going on in this situation right now? In what way does this look like we're getting along? All it is is him getting me to do stuff for him as usual. Not only that, he's ignoring me so that he can talk with women. I mean, it's the exact same thing I've been dealing with for years now. Honestly, I'm just close to cutting ties with this guy. I have no idea why I was there today. Apart from the fact that I was basically his ATM machine, I got that guy everything he wanted. Hey, I don't want to hear that type of talk. There's something you need to realize, and that's he's my father. I care about that man. I mean, sure, I get it. I know where you're coming from. 
he's not exactly what you would call an upstanding citizen. He's not exactly a role model, but he's kind of funny, and I still love him for that. He's the guy that contributed to my childhood, and if you love me in any way, you're going to respect him. Wow, so it's just you and him against me, is it? He said the exact same thing. All right, fine. Look, I guess I'll do what I can to tolerate him. I'm not doing another thing like today, though. I'm not going out of my way to go to the shops and hang out with him. Well, hey, that's fine. You don't have to do that. It's kind of silly, isn't it? You two going out of your way to hang out outside? I mean, he's got his injury, doesn't he? It would be so hard for him to walk around. You're also very busy. That was such a silly idea. Well, look, I'm glad you finally accept that. Looks like we're not going to have this issue again. What a relief. I hope that's the last time I have to spend time with him. I hope he can just do his own thing for a while now. What are you talking about? Of course that's not going to be the last time you see him. Don't be so silly. Next time, we're just going to have him over for dinner. That's a way better solution for you two to start bonding with each other. I can see you guys just now getting all chatty and chummy over a little barbecue skewer. I'm so excited. You should get keen for it too. Wait, hold on a second. What are you talking about? That is a horrible idea. Look, how about we just accept that this is a lost cause and just let me move on with my life. It's clear that him and I aren't going to get along with each other. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, look, I have to go now. I've been abstaining from study for way too long now. I'm going to get back to it. I'm going to study so hard. So yeah, get keen for that dinner. I'll give you some details about it later. Hang on, you're not listening to me right now. Amy, we're not going to have this dinner. Do you understand me? It is out of the question. This dinner is not happening. Amy? Amy! Well, just when I was thinking that you couldn't do anything more to make me lose respect for you, you go off and surprise me, don't you? I mean, I've got to say, I've known you for a very long time. You think you know a guy, and then something like today happens. What do you want now, Richard? I had enough of listening to you at the party, and I don't want to be listening to you right now. Do you have anything that's actually important that you need to say? Or are you just here to annoy me? No, oh, hey, look, what I'm going to say is definitely going to annoy you. That doesn't mean that I shouldn't say it. It's for your own good. Okay, then what is it then? You want to complain about the food again? Because I'm telling you right now, for a guy that supposedly didn't like the food that much, you were definitely stuffing your face full of it during dinner. Well, hey, did you ever think about why I was doing that in the first place? I mean, I was trying to do everyone a favor. I don't want them to actually eat that crap. Especially my daughter. She already has to put up with being around you a lot. If I have a chance to save her from that poisonous dish that you put out for everyone, then that's what I'm going to have to do, even if it meant my life was on the line. Oh, stop being dramatic. I mean, you made such a big fuss about it when I was there, but don't think I didn't have my eye on you after I left the room. The moment I left, I could hear you munching on that food like it was your last meal. You secretly liked that thing. You just hate the fact that I was the one that cooked it. Well, you know what? Maybe you're right about that. Maybe I'm pretty annoyed that you're the one that cooked it. So, uh, does that really matter? Yeah, of course it does. Just be honest with yourself, Richard. You have something against me. I could paint you the Mona Lisa, and you would say it looks crap just because I was the one that painted it. This prejudice attitude you have towards me stops you from appreciating anything I do. No. Look, you've got the wrong impression of me. That's not the case at all. Do you actually think that I have something against you personally, Tom? Well, uh, what other explanation is there for it? I get criticized for anything that I do. You're not satisfied with anything. I can guarantee you that if it was your daughter that cooked the exact same dish that I did today, you would be praising it, treating it like it was the most delicious thing on the planet. The fact of the matter is that you have something against me. I was the one that cooked it, and that's why you were looking down on the dish. You're so close to the bullseye, but at the same time, you're just so far away from it. 
The truth of the matter is that you showed me your true colors today. You've presented me with a window that shows me how you operate in the household. You've shown me how the dynamic is. No wonder that my daughter is off running amok. She has got no respect for you. What are you talking about right now? You have one little small dinner with us for one day, and you're assuming that she doesn't respect me? That sounds like a load of crap. You've shown me enough today, Tom. In fact, you've shown me too much. You've shown me that you're the maid of this household. My daughter is actually the one wearing the pants, isn't she? I'm sorry, what did you just say? Well, yeah, look, take a look at the situation. I mean, I saw you cooking everything today. I even saw you do the cleanup. You looked like you were a 24-7 maid or something. She didn't do one thing. Okay, and I'm assuming that this is a bad thing because... It's a bad thing because the roles have been reversed. I can't believe I never noticed it before. You're actually being whipped by her. I knew you were soft, but to think that you were that soft... I mean, it all does make sense, doesn't it? My daughter is the one studying for that medical exam and whatever, while you do some low-paying job. What do you mean by low-paying? And she's not studying medicine. She is studying law. You seriously don't know that about your own daughter? Okay, medicine, law, whatever. They're all the same thing anyway. The point of the matter is that you've been planning for her to enter some sort of high-paying position. You want to be a freeloader. You want to make her do all of the work while you do all the measly tasks at home. No, oh, don't try to deny it. That's the truth, isn't it? You're getting the wrong picture here, Richard. You're making it out that I'm doing this because I'm selfish or something. Like I actually don't want to work. Do I need to remind you that I have my own business? In fact, I have two. One of them is already up and running. I could probably leave it in the hands of my managers and never go back there again. I mean, given a little bit more time, they're going to be able to run things on their own. I've gotten them really good at talking with the customers. So that's one of my businesses that's pretty much well and truly out of the way. The next thing is my clothing brand. It is starting to be a big hit. I'm actually getting decent money in. Do you really think that I'm intending for your daughter to earn all the money for the household? Of course not. That's not the reason at all. Look, I don't care how successful some little clothing brand is. It's just clothes at the end of the day, right? It's nothing that special. What did you say that my daughter is doing again? Uh, was it law or something? Think about the sheer amount of money that she's going to be earning for an occupation like that. I am telling you right now, whatever little chump change that you earn can't compare to what she's going to earn. And you know what? I don't even know why I'm saying this to you right now, because you know it yourself. I'm sorry, what? You know that she's going to be earning a decent amount of money soon, so you're using this business as some sort of pretense. The fact of the matter is that the moment she becomes a lawyer, you're just going to quit your businesses. Okay, why would I do something as stupid as that? You do realize that this is something that I'm passionate about, right? It's not something that I just want to give up that easily. Yeah, whatever. You and I both know what's going on here at the moment. You're just cruising along, earning enough money to barely support yourselves. I mean, it's my daughter at the end of the day. I know exactly the things that go on in that household. She talks to me quite a lot. Oh, does she now? That's right, she certainly does. And one thing she tells me is how boring it is over there. I mean, you don't let her do anything. You don't let her play a couple of games. Don't let her go out with their friends. You're basically a tyrant. You're just controlling her. Oh, that is not true. It is definitely true. Just be honest with yourself. The only thing that you like her doing is studying. That's all you want her to be. Some drone that studies all the time. What a load of crap. Do you think that's how I look at my own partner? I am not that low. What I want is for her to achieve her dream. I really feel sorry for her. She didn't have the best environment to grow up in, regardless of how you feel about it. I don't care how much you think you were a great dad. 
When you put it on paper, you weren't a great dad at all. I am leagues better than any dad you'll ever be, ponytail boy. Do you even know the type of environment you created for her as a child? You were a horrible dad. I met her in high school and she confessed to me that she wanted to break free from her situation. She wanted to create something better for herself, actually have a family that didn't have to grow up in the same circumstances that she did. She confessed to me at that point in time that this was really important to her, but it was going to take a lot. She didn't know if she could actually do it or not. She needed someone's help. It was from that point on that I decided to date her. I always had feelings for her originally. But now that I knew this little secret of hers, I just wanted to be with her even more. She came from the exact same type of home I did. A place that was worse than the home kids at school had. It damaged us so badly that we were motivated to strive above that. So I am not going to stop at anything until she achieves that dream. It is our dream. Bit by bit we're closing in on it, but you just keep getting in the way. Well, look at you. Aren't you just a big, noble hero? It's amazing that you've created this little story for yourself. It excuses any toxic behavior that you want to exhibit. You think I'm lying right now? You have got no idea what you're talking about, Richard. I'm only doing what I do because I care about her. Okay, well, with that being the case, you could at least give her a break every now and then, couldn't you? Why do you have to be so strict on her? I mean, you're more of a dad for her than I am. Well, look, I guess someone had to step up to the plate. She didn't have a decent dad to begin with. You have got a lot of nerve to say something like that to me. I can't believe my daughter ended up dating a guy like you. She's not too bad of a looker. Thankfully, she got a lot of her good looks from her father. I know she could find a decent guy out there if she really wanted to. I've got no idea why she would go with some little wimp like you. Wasted talent on a guy playing dress-up every week. What exactly makes me a wimp, Richard? Do you think that just because I cut hair, that makes me girly? Do you think just because I'm designing my own clothing brand, that somehow that makes me a woman? You haven't realized that everything I'm doing is geared towards guys. The clothing I'm doing is geared towards them. It's got no girly element to it at all. If you actually showed a little bit of interest in what I was doing, you would understand that much. I just don't understand why you wouldn't choose something that more fits your gender. I mean, why don't you choose something that's manly? Go and work on a construction site, actually build stuff. You never did that type of thing when you were a little kid. You never got out the blocks and just started building a skyscraper or something. You know what? Who am I kidding? You probably spent most of your childhood just tying up your hair. I bet you used to walk around the neighborhood with pigtails on your head. That would have been a kicker amongst the neighborhood. I bet all the other girls were jealous and tried to rip them off your head. Put me down as much as you want, Richard. I was a normal kid. I was exactly like everyone else. Just because I decided to cut hair for a living doesn't mean I'm any different. I'm not going to suddenly switch careers just because you think my occupation isn't as manly as being an architect or something. I am chasing my dreams regardless of what you think about it. And if I'm being honest, I don't see anything feminine about it at all. Really? You really don't see how feminine your situation is? You must be stupid or blind. Actually, you know what? I'm going to assume that you're both. I mean, let's face it, let's put your occupation to the side. Let's forget that you spend your whole day touching the hair of other men. Let's put aside the fact that you go around putting your girly clothing on men every day of the week. Let's just take a look at what you do at home. I mean, you cooked the food today, right? I'm gonna assume that's not the only time you've done it. Of course not. I'm not gonna waste Amy's time. She shouldn't be the one cooking. She has an exam that she needs to pass. I'm not going to put that burden on her. Okay, fair enough. You do the cooking. I'm telling you right now, I was married for a very long time. There was not one night that I cooked. I left all of that crap up to the woman. I can't even remember the last time I touched a frying pan. Well, what are you trying to tell me right now, Richard? That you're incompetent or something? You don't even know how to cook? 
Don't worry, you didn't need to tell me that for me to already know. It's not a matter of can or can't. It's a matter of want. Do I actually want to sit there and waste my time cooking? Of course not. I have respect for myself. I know what I'm capable of and I know where I should invest my energies. Do you know what I did instead? I know exactly what you did. You became a drunk that didn't care about anyone except himself. You abandoned your family and started seeing women behind your wife's back. Pretty ugly woman too, if I'm being honest. I mean, that's the type of people that you wanted to waste your time with. You had a really good person back at home, and you wanted to hang out with the scum of society? You wanted to hang out with some skank over your own daughter? Hey, well, what can I say? It's not me that wants to hang out. It's always them. I'm just being a gentleman. If someone wants to see me, then why not? I'm gonna grant their wish. Well, look at you, aren't you such a grand person? Not many men would abandon their daughter and make her grow up in a single-family household just so that they could go and hang out with someone that they barely know. You took a huge risk. Things could have turned out completely different if you weren't lucky. Let's say that your daughter went off the beaten path. Let's say she didn't have her head on right and she was going to do something really bad. Was it really worth it? Was it really worth all those times you went to some dirty old motel with someone that you just met on the street? Was it worth scoffing down another beer as your daughter walks along the path of self-destruction? You can talk bad about me as much as you want, but at the end of the day, she still respects me and that's the most important thing. I am honestly at a complete loss for words. I really don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to do about her either. I honestly cannot see what she likes about you. How about you just divorce my daughter and let her find someone that actually suits her? Let her be with a real man. Someone that can actually provide for her. Someone with a little bit of money on them. Don't you hear what I'm saying? I have two businesses. I earn money. There's no issue in that department. Okay, well, if that's the case, how about you just prove it to me then? Prove to me that you're actually earning money. If you have as much money as you think you do, why don't you buy me a new car? You actually think that I need to prove to you that I have money by buying you a car? That is such a childish thing to say. I am not doing that. Get stuffed. Go and buy it yourself. You have insurance money, don't you? Stupid boy, this isn't about me being able to buy the car. This is about you proving yourself to me. Proving that you're not some girl playing with her hair. Get it through your thick skull. I'm not buying that damn car. Well, you better do that if you care about how I think of you. I mean, you're sick of me ordering you around all the time, right? Show me that your time is actually worth something. Show me that you actually have a decent income coming in. Prove it to me by buying a car. And you know what? A Ferrari will do. Thanks. You get out of here, Richard. I am not buying you a Ferrari. That's not to say that I don't have the money for it either. I just really detest doing things for you. Well, come on then. If you supposedly have the money for it, why aren't you driving around in one? Right now, you just sound like you're all talk and no action. I mean, let me just ask you a question, Tom. Do you really want to spend the rest of your life just serving me? Do you really want to spend every day getting me my burrito? Prove to me that you're actually doing something with your life, and then I'll stop giving you those menial tasks. I don't need to prove anything to you, Richard. I don't have anything to prove to anyone. I am the captain of my own ship. What I choose to do with my life is my choice alone. And you know what? I am finished talking with you. I'm not going to waste my time anymore. Yeah, go on then, run away. Just wait till a man like her pop comes along the way. She'll stick to him like a turd sticks to the bottom of your boot. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, seeing as we're talking about it so much, where is she anyway? She was the one that dropped you off home because you got too drunk. She's got school tomorrow. She needs to get back here. No, oh, you don't know what's going on. No, oh, wait, who am I kidding? It makes sense that you don't understand what happened. She can't be open to you about anything. What are you talking about right now? Well, let me break it down for you. 
Your precious girlfriend is sick of being in that house with you. She doesn't feel like she's free. She can't do what she wants to do. She's around my house for a second party. What do you mean a second party? I mean she's having a drink with her old pop. She can't be doing that. Her bar exam is just around the corner. She told me that it's crunch time and she really needs to study hard. Is she really going to waste one night going away to drink with you? Well, hey, she hasn't been wasting one night. She's been here quite a couple of times, actually. I'm sorry, are you trying to ruffle my feathers or something? Or are you actually telling me the truth? Do you think I would lie about something like this? You and I both know that she would do something like this. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. She is pretty serious about that dream of hers. But old habits tend to die hard, don't they? This is unbelievable. I need her back here right now. This better be a joke. Hey babe, how's it going? You told me the other day that you were releasing a new line of clothes. I hope all the designs are going well. You're so creative. I like find that so attractive about you. It's so good having an awesome boyfriend like you. I'm really excited for what you're going to bring out. Anyway, my class just finished right now, and I've got a couple more left. I'm just messaging to let you know that I'm going to be staying with my study group today. I won't be home for dinner. So just put it in the microwave for me. I'll eat it tonight. Make sure you make it with love. You're not getting any dinner tonight, Amy. Oh, come on. Are you getting all pouty with me? Look, I know you miss your girl and everything, but you can't have my attention all the time. It's like you said, right? I have to study for that exam. Do you really want me to sacrifice passing just so you and I can have a little more time together? Sorry, buddy, but that's just not gonna happen. Honestly, it sounds like I care more about this dream of mine than you do. Just remember that you're meant to be my biggest support. Yeah, well, not anymore. I've had enough of supporting you, Amy. You're gonna have to do it on your own. What is that supposed to mean? Why are you giving me this attitude right now? What happened? If you have something to say, don't just bottle it up. You know how unattractive passive aggressiveness is, right? Just be a man and tell me what's going on. How about you tell me what is going on? Would there be any reason as to why I'm angry at you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, think about it, Amy. What's something that you're doing recently that I wouldn't approve of? Don't act stupid. You're about to do it tonight. What? Are you kidding me? You really have a problem with me seeing my study group friends? Come on. You don't even know those guys. They're really good for me. They really help me study. I mean, if I actually pass this thing, I owe them a little bit of credit. Obviously, I owe you the most credit, but they're part of the journey too, you know. You're still referring to them as your little study group, are you? I gotta be honest, for a bunch of students that are supposedly really studious and devoted to what they're studying, they don't seem like the type of people who take what they're doing seriously. What are you talking about? You act like you've met them or something. <laughs> well, just from the photos that I've seen, they look like they just like going to the clubs and working out. It doesn't look like they do much else with their lives. Are you really going to sit there and say that these people are increasing the chances of you passing the exam? Well, they're doing a much better job at doing that than you are. At least I can actually enjoy being around them. Anyway, what do you know about my friends? You haven't met them. You looked at some photos on the internet? Who cares? That's not the real them. I don't need to meet them to know what you guys have been up to. I've seen the photos, Amy. I've seen you with them. So this is the type of thing that you've been doing behind my back, is it? All those times you were supposedly studying, you were just at the clubs being just like the other girls, weren't you? Oh, wow. That's a really bold claim you have there. You really think I'm doing that type of thing? Do you really think I'm that type of girl? I thought you thought better of me. You should have known that I'm better than that. Don't equate me to those bland pea-brained girls. I'm leagues above them. Enough of the crap, Amy. I've already seen the evidence. I've seen the photos. You present yourself as having the value of a massive dung on a footpath. 
What photos? And don't you dare call me something so cruel. That hurts. You think I care if it hurts or not? I've seen the photos on your friend's Instagram. I mean, I don't know if you actually look at that thing a lot, but she posts everything that she does. Not only that, but I've seen the stories there too. She's got an archive of them. I can see that you're doing some wild things while you're out. Oh my god. Everything I've done has been caught on camera? I had no idea that was happening. I'm like so totally going to get angry at her. What have you seen? Do you want me to list out the things that I've seen? I don't even know where to start. I guess I'd better mention that little compilation your friend has of you kissing random dudes in the club. That was definitely a highlight for me. All the fights you had with the bartender because he didn't give you your drink for free was another. I really didn't think that you had that type of personality. I thought you were a lot gentler on the inside. Looks like I've seen the real beast come out. Oh, and how can I forget? The creme de la creme. That one video where you're mounted up on some guy's shoulders, giving the camera a finger telling Tom to go F himself? You've given the ultimate disrespect to the guy that's wanted the most for you. This is the type of partner I've been dating this whole time, isn't it? This is the person I've been supporting. Oh my god. Look, Tom, you have to understand. I just needed a little bit of a release. I needed a break from things. I mean, you're just too hardcore about this. Like, I know I did some horrible things and whatnot, but are you really going to think badly over it? Like, think of things from my perspective. It hasn't exactly been easy, you know. Of course I thought of those things from your perspective. I thought about how things must feel in your position, and I've got to say, you've got it really easy. In what way has this been easy? I'm a uni student constantly studying. Well, think about it. You have a boyfriend who's doing everything for you. He owns all the money, and every single penny that he has is contributing to the future that you're going to have with him. I didn't spend anything on myself. Not one thing. On top of that, I've also been doing all the housework and all the cooking. You don't have to waste one minute on that. All I've asked is that you study for the bar exam. All that I asked is that you pursue that dream that I was so moved by. Now it's like you don't even care about it. You gotta be kidding me right now. Of course I still care about the dream. I'm just a person with faults. Are you seriously going to get angry about something like this? Just give me a break already. Jeez. It's like you don't even care about me. Well, that's very interesting coming from you. I was thinking the exact same thing. Take a look at all those times your dad just ordered me around. Take a look at all the times that he looked down on me. You didn't defend me once. You always took his side. Well, you know what? If you love your dad so much... He can be your one and only supporter. I am done. I am out of the picture. Are you kidding me right now? You're actually thinking about breaking up, aren't you? You know what? I haven't even taken that exam yet. I'm probably going to pass the thing. You're just like totally overreacting right now. Sorry to be mean, but I don't need you to take that exam for me to know the result. I've already known your attitude towards things. I also know that you haven't been putting in the hours. It's pretty obvious that you're going to fail that thing. I've got no intention of being with a fool anymore. Yeah, alright then. Well, why don't you just go on and get out of my life? I didn't need you in it anyway. I'm telling you right now, you're making a big mistake. I mean, let's face it. There's nothing special about the businesses that you do. There's no way you're going to make any money from that type of thing. The moment you see me as one successful and wealthy lawyer, you're going to start regretting the day that you decided to break up with me. I can promise you that much. Amy liked to boast and bluff about how well she's going to do. She and I both knew that she was going to fail that exam. And what do you know, the day of the exam comes around and she's completely at a loss about it. It looked like she was reading a different language. None of it made sense to her. From what I heard, halfway through the exam, a shrill shriek echoed throughout the room. Everyone turned to Amy to see her tearing up the paper in anger. She then stumbled out of the hall with a swagger, looking like quite the hero in everyone's eyes until she puked just before she left the door. 
It seems that the day before she was out clubbing as she usually does. She didn't take her studies seriously at all, and now she has a massive student loan that she has to pay off. From what I hear, she's continued her drinking habit and she's actually joined her father in it. I can see her slowly becoming the type of person he is, just some drunken failure who can't do anything with her life. It's really a shame to be honest. I was excited for when Amy broke the cycle of poverty, but I guess she's just gonna repeat the mistakes of her father. I feel sorry if she ever has children, and I'm actually a little bit sorry for the mother. She put a lot of effort into raising Amy, and I'm pretty sure she's disappointed in what she's seeing now. Her father and her may be enjoying a lifestyle of getting wasted, but his insurance money won't last forever. Time will tell what happens to them. As for me, on the other hand, Amy and her father really looked down on my business. They didn't think that anything I was doing was important. They didn't see what was special about a bunch of clothes. Well, little did they know that my clothes were actually going international. People are buying my stuff all over the world. I'm actually growing my brand. I'm waiting for the day when I can just walk down the street and see someone wearing what I've created. With my persistence and dedication, I'm sure I'm going to achieve that. Especially now that I don't have to support anyone else's dream but my own. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe in order to see more videos like this one. Please be sure to comment and check back for new videos as well.